Wherever you are in the world, welcome to another edition of Jerry's Take on China and I'm Jerry. Today I'm going to talk about Australia and the dirty business surrounding a dirty industry, coal. My grandfather was a coal miner in the north of England and he died soon after he retired. I was quite young at the time and my lasting memory of him was how he was constantly coughing, coughing up blood. This was about 55 years ago and the UK held no responsibility for the working conditions that killed him. In those days, it was just how it was. If you worked in the pits, there was a strong possibility, especially for my grandfather's generation, that you wouldn't get to enjoy much of your retirement. Coal really is that dirty. The unions and the industry fought hard for improvements and they got them. Over the next 20 years, coal mining in the UK became safer. It was more automated and for the most part, the miners, it was still a tough but reasonably well-paid job. Then the government got dirty. During the Thatcher years, miners were considered too expensive. The National Union of Miners were considered too strong and there was cheaper coal to be found in far-flung places. The coal industry in the United Kingdom was destroyed by the Thatcher government. From a peak of 228 million tons, production there is now about 1 million tons. And for the tens of thousands of miners and their families, it was a very dirty business indeed. It wasn't that the UK didn't need coal, they did. It was cheaper to import it from places as far away as Australia. Coal now in the UK is planned to be phased out and that's great news. Imports are just a little over 2 million metric tons and these come from the US, Russia, Australia and a small amount from the EU. China, on the other hand, still has huge productions of coal. According to one report, China's production hit record levels with over 384 million tons produced in one month last year. But even that wasn't enough. China, as well as being the world's largest coal producer, is the world's largest user and therefore also the world's largest importer of coal. And by a long way, most of that coal comes from Indonesia. A lot comes from Russia and Mongolia and some comes from the United States and even Australia. And yes, this news will surprise many Australians but coal is still being shipped from Australia. Foreign Minister Penny Wong mistakenly stated in May this year that Australia's largest market for coal was China. She was wrong, that's now Japan, but exports are still heading to China. What will also surprise Australians are four other facts. One, China never banned Australia's coal. They stopped some ships in October 2020 from unloading because the coal that was being delivered was considered to be too dirty. Two, Australian coal exports were always scheduled to drop, particularly as China's focus on carbon reduction increased. And this was forecast by the Australian National University. So despite media claims that China was deliberately hurting Australia in retaliation for some nasty comments from the PM at the time, Australia really should have been better prepared. 3. Australia was only 2% of China's imports, so for China this was a minor hiccup. And to cap it all, the Australian coal was the most expensive of all of those imports. And 4. Because the change happened quickly, China still needed to find an alternate source. And that source came from Australia's supposed allies, the USA. They took advantage of Australia's position and ramped up exports to China by as much as seven times what they'd shipped the previous year. Good friends, eh? There's a lot of criticism of the fact that China still uses so much coal. Whenever people want to describe China badly or as the world's leading polluter, they mention the fact that China is still building coal stations. And this is true. And the complaints might have some merit, but on closer examination, there are a few considerations which might make the critics stop and think. 
In their analysis of the future of the Australian coal industry, the University of New South Wales points out that the real threat to the Australian industry is not China. It's global changes in coal usage. And while China is indeed building more coal power stations, they are of a different type and the country has closed 291 older style coal stations. China's also opened its first carbon capture storage facility and is building two more to open within the next three years. It's also well known that China is the world's leader by significant margins in wind, solar and most other renewables. It's also the largest user of electric vehicles. Over the next few years globally, there will be considerable reductions in the use of coal. And Australia is facing up to the fact that they will export less to every nation, including the 320,000 tonnes they currently send to the UK. The New South Wales government are already planning this transition and the associated loss of jobs and revenue is being taken into account. And this brings us to the other point of the video. I don't like to be the one to say, I told you so, but I told you so, several times over the last 12 months in fact. The reason for China stopping those 70 ships was not because China was angry with Scott Morrison. Only the media would be stupid enough to have you believe that. It was because the entire world is telling China to reduce emissions. And the best way to do that would be to stop burning coal. But that, for the time being, is an impossibility. However, if we're to go back to 2015, we'll find Australia's own Institute for Energy, Economics and Finance gave us the real reason. Australian coal, despite their industry claims, is dirtier than the others. As a direct result of massive pollution problems in Hebei province in late 2020, According to Chen Hong, Director of Australian Studies in East China Normal University, an environmental order was sent out to shut down or change operations. And people did what was necessary. They reduced reliance on the most polluting coal that was being imported. They reduced imports from Indonesia too. But since China only took 2% of its imports from Australia, what seemed like an insignificant change was actually economically life-threatening to Australia. And now another truth has come out. A few days ago, in Australia's parliament, Andrew Wilkie, a politician who doesn't buy into the anti-China or China bad narrative, stepped up and told his fellow parliamentarians what China has always known. The industry in Australia has lied for years about the fact that Australian coal is cleaner than the competitors and he produced thousands of pages to justify his statement. The problem was, the Australian coal industry has not only lied to China, it's lied to its own people, its own government, and as a result, has embarrassed its parliamentarians into misleading the world with what they thought were facts about Australia's clean coal, but were in fact cover-ups about its dirty coal. Coal may be a dirty product, but this is a very dirty business indeed, and to me is yet another example of China being right and Australia's media being wrong. If you enjoyed that and you believe that, please feel free to like it and share it and subscribe. Now the other thing is every single article that I read here is attached in the description. All of the facts and the figures and the evidence is there supporting this. So please feel free to read that. And if you happen to have trouble listening, then it can be read as a script. So you could actually listen to it and read it at the same time. Thanks once again for watching Jerry's Take on China, and I'll see you the next time. Bye for now.